Magnin? Here. Murata? Here. Osgood? Here. Payne? Here. Patel? Here. Salemi? Here. Solomonides? Carrier? Sweezy? Here. Taylor? Here. Messino? Here. We have a quorum. Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. I'm going to ask that uh, item 10 be placed um, after the reports of uh, Chairman, uh, Chief Executive Officer, and Consul. Is there objection to move that item 10 up to 8? No objection. Okay. Public comments relative to agenda items? Public comments? Okay. Approval of the minutes of the meeting of March the 12th, 2018. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved. Second? Second. So moved and seconded. Are there any additions or deletions? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Maureen? Denise? Um, report uh, from district uh, chairman, no report tonight. Report from the chief executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, the, the, the next uh, few meetings uh, that people will be concerned themselves with with our towns, uh, on April 12th, there will be a meeting uh, with the Energy and Environment Committee, specifically to talk about the CSOs uh, related to the North Branch and also talk about the integrated planning. Um, upcoming uh, board meetings, uh, we mentioned earlier that there is going to be a Water Bureau meeting in May. We haven't got a date yet, but we, this is an important meeting to talk about the, uh, talk about the, the minimum stream flow releases at the West Branch <clears throat> and also to talk about uh, uh, the concerns about uh, diversion permits and such for the, for the West Branch. Um, Audit committee, um, we have not had an audit committee in a, a very long while. Um, and we're gonna, we've got one scheduled for April 18th, and we do not have a time. Is that correct? We're working on, we're working on the time. Um, this is an important meeting. Uh, we're going to be giving a full update on our recovery plan with HCL, our, our a systems integrator for our new SAP system. We've talked about this numerous times about uh, the, the project with, with um, with SAP and with HCL. So we're going to give a full detail in terms of our recovery plan with them as well. We do have a draft agreement to bring the project back on track, and we'll give a full update then. Um, the groundwater uh, discharge uh, bill, uh, too deep. We do have a meeting scheduled for April 5th, which is this coming Thursday, with myself, district council, uh, the chairman, and uh, deep uh, commissioner Klee. Um, just one, one. Yep. Uh, on the 18th, uh, we're going to have, we got a conflict, uh, our consul, uh, Mr. Hallar and I are going to be in Washington and won't be home until, I think, the 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Right, that's not going to work. So it's not going to work out. Uh, oh, is, that, is that for audit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll reschedule that. That's fine. Um, and uh, uh, one of our commissioners have requested an update on this. Uh, we are going, we mentioned this in uh, the Water Bureau meeting, we are going to, um, uh, coming in uh, May 1st, we're going to be putting bill inserts uh, uh, notifications into our customers to let them know effective Jan June 1st, we'll start to charge the primacy charge. If everyone remembers, back in the budget process for the state, there was approximately $2.5 million that needed to be funded uh, for purposes of DPH staffing to oversee the water utilities across the state. DPH, the Department of Public Health. Yeah, Department of Public Health. They, uh, they, uh, the decision was made to charge um, a fee per customer per meter 
which was approximately $3, which is approximately $400,000 for the MDC for the year. Uh, there needs to be $200,000 collected by and a payment made by January 1, 2019. So we're going to be notifying our customers. We did, back in, in, uh, in January of this year, did send out a, pu a press release notifying the public of this issue. Um, so it'll be approximately 33 cents per month uh, for, for all of our customers. And uh, again, that, that notice will go out on May 1st. Um, let me just see here if there's anything else besides. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize, uh, unfortunately, we, um, I have received a resignation from the Director of Finance, Rob Constable. Um, for the last week and a half, I've been trying to encourage him to reconsider. Uh, he did get a, um, an offer uh, that he really felt was in his best interest and his family's best interest. Um, so he is scheduled to leave April 20th. We are in the middle of our audit. We have brought in Cone Resnick. Uh, they actually started today with three staff persons, senior CPA accountants, uh, to help Rob the next three weeks. They will work with Rob and they will help transition. We did post Rob's job, uh, Director of Finance, last Wednesday. Uh, and we are going to use Rob and uh, Cone Resnick and others uh, to... Uh, to help uh, shortlist a candidate to replace Rob. Rob probably won't be here to be part of the interview process, but uh, we, we desperately tried to keep Rob, but uh, his, his, his mind was made up. It was apparent. And uh, so we wish him all the best. And uh, um, we uh, met with Rob's staff to assure them that, uh, that Cone Resnick will be here. Cone Resnick will be here till J June 8th to finish the audit and to help assess and transition the new director of finance um, uh, with Rob's absence. So uh, there's plenty more that will, is in my report, but uh, that's it for tonight. Are there any questions? Questions? If not uh, item number eight, a report from the district council. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bart Heller and district council. I have uh, a few things to report on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, class action lawsuit uh, brought after the Supreme Court decision on Glastonbury later. Uh, we are in the very preliminary parts of that right now. Um, there is a budgetary impact uh, for hiring counsel. Um, there are numerous defenses to it. But as of right now, we are pursuing insurance coverage for officers and directors. Uh, so we will, uh, we have a 30-day extension uh, from the plaintiff's counsel. So we will uh, deal with that um, at the next board meeting. We'll have a lot more information for you on that. Uh, second matter is, as you know, I've been appointed by the board to the water utility uh, coordinating committee which is uh, coming up with its final report uh, this committee was designed to identify uh, where they where there is water uh, and to identify who is providing the water to each community um, and by that um, there are service areas that everybody has uh, and what happens within those service areas if one of these smaller water companies fails. Um, in addition to that, we're discussing, we're coming up with an overall plan which assesses the impact uh, of the stream flow regulations on safe yield. Uh, as you all know, the Department of Environmental Protection uh, has adopted stream, minimum stream flow regulations. The MDC, because of the particular uh, sources of water and the contributions that we make to the Farmington River, uh, has been adjudged exempt from those regulations. If we were not exempt from those regulations, it would have a very significant impact on the amount of water that we have to provide our customers. Uh, something to the tune, Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, it would be about 12 million gallons a day. 
uh, so that that would mean you have 12 million gallons less that you have to sell to any type of a customer. Uh, Connecticut Water, uh, Aquarion, the other companies have started their assessments and their impacts are similar. The, there was some discussion, uh, the Department of Environmental Protection had deferred discussion of that, which was originally in the water plan, uh, to refer it over to the Water Utility Council that I serve on, saying that really it was too complicated of a topic and not ready for discussion in the water plan. When we got to the Water Utility Coordinating uh, Council, they again said, well, we don't have enough information. You really shouldn't consider that. But that was not accepted by the Water Utility uh, Council because you have to start somewhere. You can always refine the numbers as you go along. The regulations are complex as they deal with droughts and other exemptions to these minimum stream flow regulations. But in order to at least have a baseline to start, you need to understand what is the general impact. Um, the general impact on other water utilities is similar to what it is to us, which is 12 to 15 million gallons a day. Uh, in particular, that would have impacts uh, on in the Fairfield County area. Uh, whereas, you know, in the last drought, they had quite a problem down in Greenwich. Um, so that, that is being done. The public comment period has started on the Water Utility Coordinating Committee report. Uh, it started uh, about two weeks ago, and there's about three weeks left for public comment to be received. And then uh, a final plan will be drafted in uh, the springtime. Uh, I'd like to thank our uh, engineering department, which has spent a lot of time going over these plans and providing me with uh, the technical expertise uh, to, to actually comment on these things. Uh, so I, I've been pretty much just a mouthpiece for the people who know what they're doing here. Uh, the, uh, we have, I think, contributed a lot to the process uh, and to everybody's understanding. and. I think we have uh, clarified the situation of who is providing water and where. Uh, and now the next part will be to discuss what the, where are we giving the water and where do we have needs and how are we going to uh, cover the needs in the future for the state. Um, the last thing I'd like to talk about is the legislative report. Um, Chris, uh, do you want to uh, give a report on that? You, you may have seen, uh, Chris Stone, Assistant District Counsel, you may have seen in your emails uh, last week, and you'll get another report uh, towards the end of this week, the uh, trip bill tracking report, <coughs> which indicates what bills we're watching, what bills we're uh, stating objections to, and what bills we support. There's also some editorializing by me uh, in one of the columns, so take a look at that in terms of what, what our position is. And I'd appreciate any feedback you have either through email or you can call me on my cell at any time or here at the district at any time. Uh, we're really keeping an eye on the, it's beginning to be the close of the committee work. Uh, the major, three major committees, finance, judiciary, and appropriations will be done. I believe beginning of next week is the, this week is their, is their JF deadlines are, are falling. Once that's done, um, they'll start meeting in earnest uh, the, uh, as a full body. And we'll keep an eye on the bills that I've indicated and that re those reports we're, we should be watching. We look out for amendments at this point to make sure there's no amendments that are going to be uh, submitted that will either hurt us and certainly support those amendments that would help us. Um, in terms of the, the one major issue that we're keeping track on is the uh, looking after the uh, state water plan and the efforts to uh, whether there's going to be a public hearing. I believe there will be uh, a public hearing, so we'll keep an eye on that and then to see what the legislature does with, the, uh, with that plan. So, and any amendments that might come about uh, to that plan. So that's the strategy so far. So far, so good. It's been a relatively quiet session. Uh, there's a lot of business on the budget, a lot of business um, with, with issues that do not affect us. Um, but so far, uh, we, we're faring uh, pretty well. I'd be more than happy Are to there any questions? Any questions? Questions? 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you. And I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any questions of the Chief Legal Counsel, Mr. Halloran? If not, uh, proceed to uh, item number 10, taken out of order. A Water Bureau consideration of a potential action regarding public request for replacement of benches on MDC, for placement of benches on MDC watershed land. Is there a motion? Second. Moved and seconded. The resolution Commissioner, we'll bring a standard back for you for next month, which will include these two benches, so that yeah, way we're forever uh, moving forward. We have allowed it in the past. We have allowed it in the past. Any questions? Rich? Was this precipitated by the letter that's in our packet? Yes. Okay. There, was, there was testimony relative to the letters that are in front of you. Okay. Further questions? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item number nine, uh, Board of Finance consideration of and potential action regarding budget for legal defense of non-member town surcharge class action suit. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, it's so moved been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion. You could have the uh, past um, um, unanimously at the water, I mean at the Board of Finance, you could have the clerk read the uh, resolution now because we don't have it in writing. So The resolution is not in front of you, but it was um, for the uh, funding for the legal defense of the non-member town surcharge class action lawsuit uh, will be 100% funded on the water side of the, uh, of the district. Is there a second? Okay. And second, the discussion. No discussion. I'm sorry. What? Uh, I was when I was good on the non voting commission from Glastonbury. I made the comment at the finance committee, I'll make it again, which is that I understand the need for the uh, appropriation for the legal work. I hope, however, that our legal staff and our executives will evaluate the cost-benefit analysis of legal fees versus a settlement as we go forward in the process. Thank you. Further, qu further comment? If I just might, Mr. Chairman, uh, Bert Heller and District Council, I, I acknowledge uh, that it's always good to discuss the most cost-efficient resolution. However, there are complex issues in this lawsuit, not the least of which is they seek reimbursement for fees back to 2006 and the statute of limitations uh, on a case that's brought in 2017 is three years. So that would mean that charges after 2000, you know, the charges going backwards should be limited to 2014. And as you all know, legislation was passed uh, that specifically authorizes this charge going forward from 2014. So uh, there are quite a few defenses to this matter, um, and we are meeting with council. We're meeting with uh, the insurance companies on this uh, for coverage, and uh, we will report back as this matter proceeds. If I may just add to that, please. Sure. Um, so I, I'd just like to make cl clear, uh, clear up an issue uh, that we talked about earlier in the Water Bureau meeting. I just want to make it clear, one of the commissioners asked, you know, what the risk, the risk is the worst case, right? So we have to prepare for the worst case. Uh, just to remind everyone, we did cut the legal budget $600,000 in 2018. And this money is coming from an account uh, that, uh, that although we don't expect to spend uh, all of that, we may spend some of that amount of money that we might have to replace uh, later on in the year. So I just want to make clear that this is not uh, monies that we had extra. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to the Board of Finance. But 
but any, whether it's a settlement or whether it's the worst case scenario, whatever uh, is decided, um, I just want to be clear that the water customer will pay in their water rate whatever this settlement or claim is or becomes. So uh, uh, we understand uh, the, the commissioner's comments, and uh, but it's a little early for us to, to deal with those kinds of settlement issues. So I just want to be clear on that. Every, everyone, everyone who everyone who consumes water and has a water meter, whatever the claim is, worst case, ten million, uh, best case, nothing. Whatever that is, it will be built into. As we all know, we're a nonprofit, so whatever it costs us to operate, if the decision is we have to pay that claim over a one-year period, then we would have to what raise that amount of revenue in one year, and and on our only only revenue source is our water customer, both member and non-member town. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, item 11, consideration uh, of and potential action regarding settlement of pending litigation versus MDC. Is there an executive session on this? I, I can speak in generalities, and if we need to, we can go in executive. Okay. Um, this claim uh, arises from an allegation of Mr. Rinaldo Ruiz uh, was walking um, down a uh, crosswalk. He stepped into an uncovered, allegedly stepped into an uncovered gate box, um, injured his ankle. He was um, taken by uh, ambulance to the hospital. He went through physical, he saw the doctor, went through physical, a couple months of physical therapy, um, and then his ankle returned to um, healthy condition. Thereafter, he has outstanding medical bills of forty-seven hundred dollars, forty-four thousand seven hundred sixty-three dollars. Uh, those remain unpaid. Um, we are proposing a settlement of seventy-five hundred dollars. If there's any questions, um, I can try to answer, uh, or we can go into executive session. Uh, Ray, uh, in in Hartford, I, I forget the the street name. I forget what street it was on. Local street. Yes, in the in the crosswalk. Discussion? Um, is everybody ready for the, the settlement of $7,500? So, I have a question. Go ahead, Tom. So, some of those gate things are, are knocked off by plows and stuff like that. We take full responsibility to that, even though a Hartford truck or a plow truck or something else could knock these out of the way and we don't hear about it for a while. No, the, the claim falls under the highway defect statute, which means that we have to have notice or constructive notice of the defect. Um, so if that's our defense on, on these cases, if the cover has been missing for a substantial period of time, that's what's called constructive notice. We could have or should have investigated and found that out. Um, but in, in a case like this, um, the, the dollar amount, the amount of the medical bills that remain outstanding, um, any kind of settlement below that amount would be very difficult um, and, and this is a good cost-benefit analysis. Um, there are other cases where we, um, th that's a good, this is a, a, a pro good proposed settlement. Thank you very much. Further discussion? If not, all those in favor, please signify by sir, saying, <coughs> what's that? I didn't get who moved the motion. Uh, who, mo who moved the motion? Maureen? Second. Uh, it's already been moved, but he wanted to know who the seconding party was. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Um, uh, item 12, opportunity for general public comments. Commissioners, questions and comments, item 13. Richard. Do we have a formal exit process uh, interview that the CEO does when an employee leaves? I actually did perform that with Rob uh, and Bob Zeit, yes. Thank you. And Dom? Yep. Um, is it possible that <clears throat> we could either have council uh, give us a briefing on the uh, uh, non-member town surcharge class action lawsuit from when it started, how it how it happened, 
whatever information he could provide us, either in a brief uh, a briefing or in a meeting, whatever he prefers. I'm happy to do it. Uh, we will have a lot more information at the next board meeting. Thank you very much. Further questions? Ray? Uh, buddy, yep. <clears throat> just to reiterate what uh, Mr. Sweezy said, we did have a chance to thank Rob at the Board of Finance who worked with us, uh, in particular with the Board of Finance. So thanks again, Rob. Best of luck to you, and uh, we're sorry that you're leaving. And uh, uh, I don't know, Scott, you, you just must not have had a good argument or something. I, I don't know. Well, I tried hard, believe me. He, 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 sure. I tried okay. really I mean, hard. Uh, did he try hard, Rob? I, mean, <laughs> I tried really hard. So, anyway, very best of luck to you. Just a little short on his number. <laughs> and I, I do have a question for, uh, for, for, uh, for Scott. Scott, just to put this in context, how many gate boxes do you think there are in, in the MPC? We have 30. I mean, I, I, you know, yeah. just, just so that we can put it in context, how many, if that's a liability, how many of them are out there? So. We have 30,000 gates. Each one of them has a gate box. And then each customer... 102,000 customers has a service box right off the, uh, um, uh, right off the road on uh, on the not not on the property line. So it could be in the sidewalk or it could be in the grass just before the, the fence to the property. So um, yeah, and we we've had circumstances where these gate uh, covers and even manhole covers. One of the commissioners mentioned, you know, plows are famous for taking a a, a, a three foot uh, 300 pound uh, uh, manhole cover away and so we have a process we work with the towns and the DPWs to replace those quickly but they also <coughs> get stolen and uh, there is a, a salvage value we have gone after the, uh, the salvage companies to make sure that they report that to us and to the local police so but it's a challenge to say the least there's a gate box for every fire hydrant uh, there's a, the, and there's a gate box for every service uh, to... 14,000 uh, fire hydrants, so every fire hydrant has its own shutoff. Um, so we have a lot of gate boxes. Are they mechanically fastened? No. Uh, no. No. No, they, no, so what happens is your, your gate is down below grade, four feet, and then you literally have a, uh, a service gate box, which is really just a, a, a cast iron container, which allows, you know, you have a cover on top, and it allows you to get down to the to the uh no i'm pushing the, the cover is not mechanically fastened no it's not no, no it's not right. right no it's not thank you uh further comments uh i would just like to also i'm sorry denise thank you um you mentioned that there will be a meeting with um dep coming up i was just wondering have there been any developments since our last uh meeting in we'll regard to we, we, that's the purpose of this meeting. Uh, it's a settlement meeting, according to the representations by both parties. And what that settlement is, we haven't, we haven't <laughs> to make the settlement. gotten to it yet. But um, it's, it's uh, Thursday at 3 o'clock. Uh, we'll be meeting with them. I could say, from our standpoint, we'd much rather settle than have to litigate this or turn off their water. Um, but we will find out whether or not they have flexibility this Thursday, and we'll report back to you on anything that they offer us. Thank you. Yeah. At some point in time, we have to have resolution pending or outgoing finance director, and should have some get together. We thank you for service, government employees, we come and go, and for those who have a good job, we should economize. We'll have a party at Rob's house. It, it, as, long, as long as we're not paying for the food, we're in good shape. Other, otherwise, we won't, we won't invite Rob. <laughs> we, there's going to be a big saving in the budget. You don't understand. Oh, yeah. Rob, what are you doing tonight at about 730? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, let me, uh, are there any further comments? I'm sorry, Al. Yeah, I've, I've got two very quick ones. Uh, 
First of all, it's been a while since uh, we've had uh, any kind of discussion or report uh, with regard to our affirmative action program. And I think it's important that we uh, do that. And I'm, I'm concerned from several standpoints. Uh, one, I think it's important that we look carefully at small businesses within uh, the member towns uh, and make sure that uh, we're doing everything possible to to see that uh, those folks uh, are, are getting work. Uh, then we have women and we have minorities. Um, and I just think that we, we need to, to get an update as to where we're going and also perhaps uh, some discussion of what uh, our numbers look like in terms of our uh, general employment population. Um, my second concern, and it's, it's a general comment, and I think I've, I've not made any secret of it uh, to my uh, fellow uh, board members, and that is that um, we are in danger, basically, of consuming this company. Uh, and we have reached a point, and I understand that that everyone is under pressure, but the fact of the matter is that everyone starts to duck when you talk about what basically our needs are uh, in terms of our expenses. And I think that we have been quite vigorous. Uh, you know, how many companies, uh, particularly public companies, can you look at uh, that's, you know, when I came here in 2003, we had almost we had over 500 employees. Uh, we're 700, down 700. Uh, we're down to uh, under 500, uh, and that's just basically because we have been very vigilant. Uh, we've tried to take advantage of uh, new technologies. Uh, we've tried to reorganize and be <laughs> careful and thoughtful. But you can only cut so much, uh, and. The fact of the matter is that we need to maintain the quality of this organization. Uh, and if we don't do that, um, we will be in a death spiral. And I just think that uh, we need to be careful and thoughtful about that. And I think that we need to make sure that we explain to people uh, as carefully as we can and as thoughtfully as we can that uh, we're just not sitting here and basically uh, adding things to the bill. Uh, we're basically trying to keep this place alive, the doors open, uh, compensating our employees for the good job that they do because they're basically the horses that are pulling this wagon. But it's, it's a difficult time and I think that uh, I just would encourage people to be thoughtful and more particularly to make sure that we tell the story and tell the complete story. Uh, because there is a story to be told, and if we don't do that, uh, we are going to create some severe problems for them. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I think it would be an appropriate report from the PP&I committee relative to affirmative action. I think that's a good point, and uh, hopefully the next committee meeting you can raise that and provide a report to the body. Further, dis further comments? <laughs> Uh, just in closing, I'd like to extend uh, MDC's thanks to the families that are proposing um, benches on MDC property. We thank you for your generous contribution and uh, look forward to bringing this to an end so that we can uh, have the gifts uh, provided for public use. If not, the appropriate, uh, it's been moved without, without objection. We stand adjourned.